and today I'm going to talk to you about anthropology. So, what is anthropology? And what does it have to do with archaeology? And why am I here talking about it on Archaeosoup? Anthropology comes from the Greek anthropos, meaning human being, and logia, meaning the study or science of. So, quite literally, anthropology means the study of human beings, or the study of humanity. So, while archaeology is the study of our human past, human material culture left behind by previous generations, anthropology is the study of humans in general. So, if you study anthropology, you can be like, I know everything about everyone. Not, not really, don't, don't do that. Anthropologists don't know everything. So, yeah, anthropology is a study of humans, past, present, and future, and draws upon knowledge from the social sciences, biological sciences, humanities, and even the physical sciences. It has a long and complicated history that is very much connected to the discipline of archaeology. In America, archaeology is actually one of four subfields of anthropology. The other three are social and cultural anthropology, which is what I do, biological anthropology, and linguistics. In the UK, archaeology is actually considered an entirely separate discipline, though. We'll talk about that in a future episode. So, what do anthropologists do? Anthropologists try to answer all kinds of questions, from how humans evolve, to how they interact with each other, to how they communicate, to what institutions organize people in a society. You might find an anthropologist studying human remains to learn more about evolution, or immersing themselves in another culture to learn about how and why people do things there. Anthropologists today focus on health, education, agriculture and development, and even social change. It's a diverse field with so many areas of specialization, it's pretty hard to summarize in just one video. So, perhaps instead, it's worth taking a look at how the discipline got its start, where it came from. Arguably, anthropology can trace its roots to, well, as long as people have been visiting and describing other people. A lot of anthropologists regard Herodotus, an ancient Greek historian and philosopher who lived around the 5th century BC, as the first person to write widely on concepts which would later become central to anthropology. He described cultures of various people in the Persian Empire during the Greco-Persian Wars. Ibn Khaldun, an Arab historian who lived around the 14th century, also traveled and described diverse cultures of the Mediterranean. These might be described as the earliest forms of ethnography. Ethnography is the systematic study of people and cultures, where the researcher observes society from the point of view of the subject. They do this by thoroughly immersing themselves in another culture. We also call this participant observation. Ethnography is critical to anthropology, and it's what separates cultural anthropology from a lot of the other social sciences like sociology and psychology. As an academic discipline, modern anthropology really started to develop in the late 18th and early 19th centuries, out of the Enlightenment, like many other disciplines, as Europeans began to study human behavior systematically. Like archaeology, the history of anthropology is very bound up in colonial expansion and the desire to understand and control the unknown. As Europeans came into increasing contact with other peoples around the world, new interests in the study of other cultures developed. So, while archaeological societies were collecting curios and digging up buried relics, anthropological societies devoted themselves to studying existing cultures of colonized and previously unexplored territory. Working from traditions in the natural sciences, doctors, zoologists, and other researchers began to analyze and describe people's physical features, practices, and their material culture, and started putting them in ethnological museums. The way in which early anthropologists studied people's physical features and categorized them is now considered scientific racism. Anthropologists today do not use the same approaches and do not endorse them. By the early 19th century, a lot of theories of biological and cultural evolution began to develop, and a more defined concept of culture itself led to anthropology existing as a formal academic discipline. The colonial nations of Europe used very ethnocentric theories of cultural evolution at this time. They were really using anthropology to justify slavery and the expansion of their empires by bringing civilization to uncivilized societies, which is a very dark but ultimately pretty important part of anthropology's history. 
Despite a rather controversial past, anthropologists have since abandoned those theories and instead embrace learning about the similarities and differences between and among societies and communities, including our own. A lot of different academic theories and methodologies have been developed by anthropologists that archaeologists use, and vice versa. So, not only can archaeology and anthropology learn from each other through theoretical approaches, there are practical approaches too. Cultural anthropologists work in local communities where anthropology is taking place to help assess the impact that digs might have on local communities. Ethnographic information gathered by anthropologists can help archaeologists compare their historic findings to the present to understand how communities and cultures have developed over time. Collecting oral histories and recording folklore is another way that anthropologists can help archaeologists interpret their findings. There's really so much more to go into on this topic, um, but for now I just wanted to provide you a sort of brief and somewhat comprehensive introduction to anthropology. I hope you found it useful. I'll be making more of these videos, uh, going into a lot more depth, but for now thank you so much for watching and see you next time.